me, there's two ways that I like to see a mallard duck die. If they aren't coming down through the treetops in a flooded hardwood flat, I want to be sitting in a white spread on a hilltop in the northern prairie. So North Dakota, uh, man. In October, we're supposed to be in Canada, but the border is closed because it's 2020, everything's closed. Um, and man, everybody that I know that likes to travel and duck hunt and goes up north, you know, are like, man, don't go to North Dakota. Of all the years, don't go to North Dakota. It's going to be crazy this year. And I don't know. I think back to one time my dad said that, you know, if you're going to be stupid, you better be tough. And he said, I'm not saying that you're stupid. But he said, Spence, you sure are tough. And so when we packed up and we left home, it felt like we might be doing something that was really smart, but we also might be doing something that was really stupid. Because, I mean, from all appearances, everybody we were talking to that were up there and hunting, it was gonna be really crowded, people everywhere. And we even found that when we tried to book hotels a couple months ago, I mean, there were no hotels anywhere close. And so found a hotel literally 70 miles west of where we thought on a map that we were going to end up hunting. So we end up, we get kind of in the area that we're thinking there's gonna be ducks in and start looking and man, we, we probably scout 45, 50 minutes, maybe an hour in two different vehicles. And uh, Dylan and I get on the telephone, he's in one vehicle and I'm in the other, like we see and I'm like, man, honestly, we're not seeing anything. And when I say nothing, I mean like nothing and they basically have seen the same thing. And they've, the only semi-decent thing they found is this one big water hole. And it's like a big piece of water that you really couldn't hunt all that well, I guess. Um, but, you know, there were a lot of ducks on it. And so I guess we were hoping that those ducks would go out and feed at some point. And so they kind of hung around there and kind of put all our eggs in the basket of eventually those ducks are gonna fly. So we kept, we kept burning up the road, looking for other stuff for another, you know, another option. And we never found anything. Well, these ducks start flying. Dylan's sitting there watching them, kind of trying to lock down this water. And this other group pulls up and they start talking. And the guys are like, well, yeah, we've, we've already got permission on this spot. And he's like, all right. And he said, how many of you is it? And, and Dylan said, well, there's five or six of us. And, how many of y'all? They said there's two. And so for just a moment, we thought, well, we'd all just hunt together, hunt this water and thought, well, finally kind of got us something put together. Well, lo and behold, they talked to the farmer and the farmer says he's got a maximum of four people that can hunt his water. And so there's just not any way that we can hunt with them and hunt eight people deep. Well, in that last few minutes of light, as those ducks are coming to that little marshy pond spot, a bunch of them start rolling out kind of to the east um, onto this hilltop, which is owned by a different guy. And, um, you know, I don't want to toot his horn too much because his head will be too big to get in the truck, but somehow on trips like this, Dylan pulls out little miracles here and there. And, and the guys who were hunting the pond had told us that five or six different groups had tried to get permission on that hilltop but they couldn't get in touch with the farmer. And everybody had his phone number and somehow Dylan bumps into him on the corner of a field and they, they talk in person. And the guy's not been answering his telephone. He's like, yeah, you know, I don't normally answer the telephone. People call, all y'all guys just want to hunt. And here you are, they're, they're face to face on the, at a crossroads and the guy's like, yeah, y'all can, can have that, go for it. Uh, so we're kind of fired up. And like, as we're leaving, the guy's like, oh yeah, one more thing. Like, if you don't care, uh, I don't want y'all to drive out in the field. I've had bad experience with people driving out in the field, um, which, you know, <laughs> nothing like a kick in the teeth. I mean, you drive that far, can't find nothing. The only place you got is not only a perfect little hilltop to hunt, but you got to walk uphill and you got to carry all your stuff in. So, so we went to bed just kind of like, all right, we got to figure out how to carry this stuff in here. And we don't hunt over silhouettes. We've got full bodies and 
kind of the whole way that we're set up is based on being able to drive out in this field. So we kind of got creative and I had just, before we left, put these flyaway uh, gear racks into the back of the trailer, these things that Andrew Nielsen makes and they're pretty slick and they have conduit, uh, like three quarter inch conduit that makes, makes rails. And so we got to measuring those things and thinking about it and we figured out that if we got in pairs, two guys, each guy could carry a piece of conduit on their shoulder and they could put a dozen decoys on each side. And so we figured if, if we had six guys and everybody made two trips, that would be three pairs of two dozen decoys. So six dozen decoys in each trip. And so if we got 12 dozen decoys up there, surely to God, that'd be enough for us to shoot our ducks. And uh, it was, <laughs> it was good, really good. Classic dry field, man. Hilltop, beautiful sun, kind of right in our face, and uh, we're just kind of quartering to our right. And man, those ducks wanted in there so bad. It kind of froze that night, and uh, so the marshy spot. Those poor guys didn't end up killing more than a couple ducks because uh, the temperature just bottomed out. But man, those ducks came off that water, and we could see them from like a mile and a half when they'd get off that big water. And they'd come, and they'd see that it was froze down there in that little marshy spot, and they'd kind of make that 45 degree turn. And I mean. You just knew you had it at that point. And we shot big wads right in the face, morning, finished all our ducks, handed the camera to somebody else, let Dylan shoot his ducks. I mean, this morning, just really reminded for not being in Canada, be I mean, I, I don't know what else you want as a duck hunter. Hilltop, dry field, big wads of mallards right there at your feet. Thank you. No flat iron here. Rib out of the sky.
So that was day one. And I mean, we figured out two things. We figured out we had to sleep somewhere different, completely different. But maybe most importantly, we figured out where the ducks were. And we had six more days of hunting ahead of us. I think everybody slept pretty good that night because we're going to get them. It's only going to get better. <laughs>